Hey, hey, I'm Andy. We are in the studio and we are going to talk about this Raven some more today. What do you think about that? Um, so uh, hopefully <clears throat> this video is going to look a little bit better than the last video. If it does not, we might uh, try something new uh, the next time as well. But so uh, in the last video uh, about talking about this Raven, there is one from like last year and I haven't watched that in a while. And so I don't know what's going on with that. But I know a lot of things have changed as far as uh, me and the way I use uh, all my slate gear. Um, the Raven is no exception. It constantly uh, evolves, but of course a little slower. They keep making it better, um, which is cool because the slate guys are awesome. And uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's look a little more specifically um, to also, of course, uh, you can see it now, so that's probably good. Um, but let's take a, a little more, uh, a deeper dive, if you will, into this world of Slate Raven. So really what we're gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about what they call Batch Commander. Um, and I, I it was a standalone product. I don't know if that's still a standalone product um, with Slate. Um, in the all act and so all access pass for me means raven too and uh, i suggest you get one because like i said in my other one it really lets you um get rid of the mouse and and come into you know like using your your body and just you know like this is this is a this is an instrument kind of you know like you can not kind of it is this this mixing console this is an instrument and you can play it with a mouse one click at a time or you can play with with multiple with both your hands and multiple fingers etc um, and so I'm gonna choose to uh, do it that way I'm gonna, so I was just thinking actually I pulled this project up I was thinking well before I get this video going I might should have an idea of what I'm gonna do and it occurred to me uh, like how just how dope this thing is you know like every project I'll have markers um, you should too if you don't utilize markers utilize markers uh, every every DAW seems to implement markers in a great way um, so definitely make use of your markers and if you have a raven you get this nice little markers toolbar um, which is super cool and so I've got two markers toolbars a little one and a big one um, because when you go into the Raven mixer you only keep one bar across the bottom when I close that mixer I get this extra bar up here and I can even press this little plus thing here and get even more um, get a third row um, <clears throat> but we'll talk about that some more later but you know the marker thing just that one little thing like how fa how much faster does that make things so uh, if I'm ready to uh, If I want to jump straight to verse, straight to chorus, it's that easy. Click. I don't have to locate my mouse with my hand, locate my pointer, locate my thing, you know, go to the, you know. Or it might be a button on my keypad if I'm like a really power user in Pro Tools and stuff like that. I might have that set up. Um, but but again, you you're taking yourself out of what you're doing and into a into a controller, a hardware thing, as opposed to just being right here in my thing, you know. I'm I'm playing stuff along, and it's so. Uh, ooh, I need my master fader. So let's see. Uh, 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 where's my master fader? There it is. I want it over here. So I'm gonna drop that guy back over there. Shazam! Uh, now I can play this thing and turn it down for both of us, so I can chatter at you um so what was i saying um yeah you've got multiple toolbars you can bounce to, to markers just that quick like how easy is that um and you know bounce into my mixer i might be giving you some chatter about something check this out and you know that makes things pretty easy but how often do you see me use the mouse? You know, take note of it as you watch me roll through stuff around here. So, uh, what do these things do? Um, hopefully my head's not totally in the way. I forgot about that. Uh, what do these things do? Like, what are we looking at? So, a lot of this stuff is stock that comes through here. You open up the Raven. Um, this transport's going to be right there. And a lot of these other things, you know, it's all going to be right there. Some of these core function buttons, like getting into settings and uh, setting your fine faders level. 
uh, customizing your toolbar you know look at all this stuff available to you you can just kind of here's a cursor guy you can put them around here's bank by one different layout things here's toolbar things that you can totally customize um, there's so much more stuff going on in here than I could even use. I do like the little nav pad thing. That's a cool guy, but I just ran out of room on my two bars to have them. Um, and so on my bars, you can see I've got my two main bars. I have on the bottom, uh, closest to my transport and stuff, I have stop on do record, save, new take, uh, record. Uh, and so you're like, oh, how did you, how did, how did you get there? How did that happen? How did you make that happen? long press on that brings up our little screen can't drag that around can i know um, long press puts that uh, on our screen um, we can you know make that go away by confirming it whatever but again long press um, and you can then you can see up here we have our actions so we can put a delay in milliseconds ahead of our action um, and we can tell it how many times we want to do that thing so and this one's a pretty simple one I wanted I want to just hit the space bar to stop it recording I want to hit command Z to undo the recording and then shift option plus does something okay and so um, that shift option plus that is a custom function that I've written um, and so I assume that all of the uh, DAWs, you can do the same thing in all of them. But uh, the way it works in Digital Performer, if I go to my setup menu and hit the commands window, I have this command. So here's all of the commands that uh, DP will kind of let a person do, I guess, inside uh, the things. And you can see the keystrokes whoops, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so if I roll down through here, you'll see all these key under the key one column these are all set and from uh some you know like uh, motu or somebody whatever and there's all these complicated keystrokes set up i just do my own there's a space in here i can do a custom keystroke so basically for all the things that i want to do i'll add custom keystrokes you know and then that's because it's easy i know what they are um, and then I just put them into my my Raven programming thing, and so like on on what we can see right here, we have new take is actually one, erase take, delete take, uh, and add stereo audio tracks are examples of things that I've added, or that I've kind of and I added you know the functionality was there, but I added my own uh, my own keystroke things, and uh, then I can go over to this hold a long press and so I know shift option plus was the one in when it comes time I put that in there and to add a key command you know you just press the thing and enter key combination V easy enough uh, it's there where it's still highlighted so I can remove it and confirm um, and so that's how you kind of put it in manually you can give it a name over here uh, you can give it colors by clicking on one of these things that's the color of the button itself and that's cool um, say you uh, want to clear it all just hit the clear all button that's kind of handy you can record it it'll record you doing stuff I think that's how they got some of that uh, stuff in the click menus I haven't even played with that thing um, there's a quick list thing so this whole thing comes out and these are all built-in functions that you can just add to the thing and, and there's a lot of they're all really useful and relevant um, and there's a whole user user category which used to have stuff show up in there but I reinstalled uh, all this recently um, and if, now we've got a gestures category. So um, there's a whole, in the latest update, you can do things with gestures uh, to kick off, you know, the same as like, you know, hitting one of these buttons. So like I have this button for stop, undo, record, uh, which boom, you can hit that. Well, if you want to do that same kind of thing, you can put it on two finger swipe, you know, I didn't like that one, get rid of it. Um, or a three or whatever, or two finger pinch. Uh, all kinds of stuff, squeeze, splay, a two finger tap, three finger tap, two, two finger double tap. Um, <laughs> I've got to rethink all kinds of things now, seeing all that this can now do. Cause uh, man, like I said, every time you turn around, they're making this stuff better. Um, it's stupid, like seriously. Um, and I, you don't even have to pay to like keep this going. I've had this thing for like two years. Um, I bought it and like, that was it. Um, and I could keep getting updates you don't have to pay for anything it's great um, and so that's kind of that's how you get uh, buttons and such onto uh, or, or macros onto your buttons onto your buttons and so what kind of stuff do I have on my buttons 
Um, some of the basics, like I said, I left all that in. I always have to have my memory markers available to me on my toolbar. Uh, that's necessary. So I have over on mine, uh, you, the first two, of course, stop, undo, record, save, new, take, record. Those are get used more than anything. Uh, then over here, these get used a lot. Um, Spacebar and record are on, there, are on there only because I go out into the main room of my studio here and uh, get on the drum kit and pound away on drums, and I'll run takes from out there. Um, if I don't have my laptop, it might be in the house or something, or I'm just being lazy and don't want to fool with it, I'll just use my phone and use the little Slate app to control uh, the workstation. Um, so I added Spacebar and Record onto there just so they'd be on a panel that was quick and easy to access for me uh, and did it like that. So uh, then we have Loop, uh, Open Plugin Window, Clear, Set, Start, uh, Rewind, Click, you know, and so those are just quick, makes, makes it quick and easy. There's a Click button up there, there's a Rewind button up there, but they're smaller and they're up there. Um, so now they're down here and they're easy for me to get to. Um, so super cool. Uh, other things on this uh, panel up here, uh, we have this where I uh, throw throw down on, hey, turn on my VST instruments, and uh, so with one press, as you saw, I think, in the other video, um, you can get that stuff happening. Let's have a long press look. That's a more complicated one, so uh, I set a command, or there was a command, to get this whole business going. Uh, we've got a new instrument track window comes up, and then we've got a bunch of cursor actions. So this takes advantage of the fact that most things on computers, um, and most people don't know it, but most things you can get around without a mouse, like but with their arrow keys and tab and enter key. Um, I've worked with some wizards in the past, man, that know all that stuff, and can they just blow you away moving around the, the screen and, and doing computer stuff, like with just tabs and, and keystrokes and so uh, that's what we have really on most of these bunch of cursor down blah 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 and it finds its way through a menu and adds the track and adds the MIDI track and that's really cool nice then we've got uh, resetting my return to zero points a pause button uh, delete tracks export add tracks add mono track add MIDI track add stereo track add similar track um, bundles opens up my buses window so I can quickly get to that if I need to add a new bus for something um, and then over here on this side those are just the tools um, and the, really the only stuff I use in there I'll bounce back and forth between scissors and pointer and pencil when I'm doing uh, minor clips work correction um, occasionally well not occasionally but in every every song uh, I will certainly do uh, pitch correction on vocal tracks um, so I can show you and that's one of the few things that I really I would do with a mouse um, as opposed to uh, on the Raven I've never even tried to do that on the Raven uh, but when you go into this menu here in DP here you can see your pitch stuff um, and the, the pitch system on this guy is super awesome super awesome bomber tight if you haven't seen it or used it um, and so uh, that stuff switches between, you know, sometimes I might want to cut some of these sections up so I can smooth out the thing um, occasionally. That's that's when I would use the scissors. And uh, if it's really bad, I might grab the pencil and just draw a line in or something to get the right pitch. Um, those are kind of rare, but it's good to have that stuff right there to take advantage of. I could probably, there's probably a lot of other useful tools right there that I just don't use. There's so many things to use, and at the end of the day, I'm just here to make music. I'm not here to be the best engineer or computer wizard guy. Um, it's all about the fastest and easiest way to, and most stable way to make things work. Um, and so I'll tell you, this system that I have right now, it's been over a decade. Um, the, the Raven and the Slate stuff is two, three years now. Um, but Digital Performer, Mac, etc. cetera, um, this platform is so stable. I open projects and I leave them open for days. I once did a whole record on one project file starting, I just did a song and then just went a little ahead and started a new song and I did like eight songs. One project file over like a month's time, less than 30 days, around 28, I think, 28, 29 days, and never even closed the project, let alone shut a computer down or anything like that. Like a month just open. Um, blew my mind. Um, so it's the most stable stuff ever. 
uh, I never have like all of, all of my friends that use Pro Tools like have problems, so many problems. Um, that's why I, that's the only reason why I haven't switched. Um, I like Pro Tools just fine. I've used it lots of times, but man, the problems people have that I just don't have ever. So that's very nice. And uh, when you throw the Slate stuff on top of it, all of a sudden you've got way more headroom in your computer. Um, because it's all super light. That is a 2011 iMac, just bought off the rack, not designed for audio or anything. And it's still chunking along. I can't replace it because I don't have to. I, you know, I crank up track counts. I get full orchestras with a couple different synths and all this uh, processing stuff from Slate, and it just doesn't weigh the system down. It works it hard. You know, like you can run it right up to the top, but man, it's still plugging along. So. Um, We've uh, gone astray from our discussion, uh, looking a little more closely into the Raven. Um, that's probably enough for this segment. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and you won't miss any of these. Um, when I think of stuff, uh, I'll I'll make something. Uh, I'll bring it up. I'll put a new post about it. And uh, there's so many things about this Raven um, that I I forget, you know, and uh, I don't think I don't think of and. Like, hey, whatever. Oh, yeah, there was this one cool. That's right. I've I got to start using this, the floating mixer. Like, all of a sudden, you can have your, you know, your nice big thing mixer thing pop up above any of your stuff, which is super convenient because in a, in, a, in a DAW like this, I've got to hit my track selector and, like, do that to make all those tracks come up. But what if I didn't do that and only two were showing? Oh, no problem. Just hit that floating mixer. You can get that intro chorus bumped up a little bit just like that, right? So, anyways, uh, that's all for now. You guys have a fantastic rest of your whatever. Later.